Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be showing you some of the updates I've done recently to NoTrack. I've been working quite hard on it for the past couple of weeks, so perhaps my video output has been a bit lower than it uh, should have been, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of programming on this. So NoTrack is a network-wide blocker of tracking and some advertising websites. You can use it on your internal network, on something as simple as like a Raspberry Pi, and it handles all the network requests from all your other systems, protects you from accessing certain websites. So yeah, it's primarily aimed at blocking tracking websites, but there are also advertising block lists you can add to it. So yeah, I've been working on version 0.9 and I've ported the project across to GitLab. I've had the code for some time on GitHub. As we know about Microsoft taking over GitHub, it seems a good idea to get away from the website. It's all about trying to avoid putting all your eggs in one basket, going with one or two technology services. Let's go with GitLab because they are an alternative to Microsoft. At the moment, you cannot upgrade your version 0.8 version of NoTrack to 0.9. And I'm not even sure how I'm going to manage this. I mean, for starters, we're moving to a completely different code hosting service. Whether Git pull works directly from another site, don't know, haven't tried. But not only that, I've changed a bit of the underlying system. So. <laughs> At this point, if you want to take it, and bear in mind it's still in development at the moment, so if you want to take it, it's going to have to be an uninstall, then a reinstall. Uninstall your old version of no track, there is a bash script included, and then use the new install script. But enough about that, let me just show you some of the things I've done. One of the nice new additions is I've added DHCP configuration, so you can automatically enable blocking on any computer that connects to the network. You don't have to set a static IP address. You will have a need to turn off the DHCP on your router. That's probably where it's primarily being handled at the moment. So yeah, turn it off on your router and then just set these uh, IP address ranges up. And you can set a selection of static hosts. And this takes really well now. I've actually loaded up some virtual machines, found they've got the wrong IP address. You get it off the list at the top here, paste it in as the MAC address, the IP that you want, save the changes, reboot the device, reboot the virtual machine in my case, and when it comes back, bam, static IP address. Couldn't be bloody simpler. Well impressed with it. Looking under DNS query results, so what I've done in the back end is now I've got just one SQL table. Before I had a live and a historic, so live would just be 24 hours, and historic would be however long it was going to be. Now I've just got one table and it's set a fixed timeline of 60 days. So it'll start deleting things after 60 days, but I'll see how that one goes at the moment. So you can look back through various times and I will expand out the options on this kind of in future. You can choose to look up the specific results of certain systems. So for example, that is a mobile phone. Let's see what it's done in the past seven days. Um, yeah. That is perhaps a long-winded list to look through, so perhaps it'd be an idea just to group the results, and you can group them against the site name. This is the default view, and this totals up the number of sites you have been on. You can filter to look at allowed blocked or local queries. You can now carry out searches for certain websites. So let's just put something like Google in, and those are all the blocked results I've had for Google. And those are all the requests I've had for Google. If I go back to the time search and then click on one of the links here, it brings up this investigate page and attempts to narrow down the search range in looking at what may have been loaded up on one specific website. Not entirely accurate in this case because I happen to have results from Firefox and GitHub. That just happens to be a coincidence in timing, but the main result is the site I just clicked on, GitHub app, was also queried from other GitHub pages. So yeah, I was on GitHub website at the time. And scrolling further down, got a little view on the graph of how many requests there have been. But that graph is more in use on the homepage and showing how many queries I've had throughout the day. And if you hover over the points now, it tells you how many results there were at that specific hour. So yeah, that's quite a nice change. And this is a rolling 24 hour period now. The previous version of NoTrack 0.8 had a fixed timeline period because it was a 24 hour graph from four o'clock in the morning to 3.59 in the morning. 
So yeah, there's been quite a lot of changes. Not so much on the config side, but I was just going to show you this result of where you can choose whatever block list to enable. I have done a bit of work to the styling as well. Yeah. I've kind of lost track really of uh, just how much I've done. Yeah, it's been quite a lot over the past couple of weeks. I'll keep you updated of when no track at 0.9 is ready for release, but if you want to try it out now, yeah, go for it. But just accept there may well be some more changes to come. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.